My name is Oren Aiden. I'm a senior researcher at Spatial Statistics team. Today, I will talk about coral bleaching. A pertinent threat for coral ecosystems is bleaching. Bleaching is the event during which corals expel the algae living in their tissues. And these events can be triggered by a combination of environmental conditions ranging from high ocean temperatures to high acidity. Even though coral reefs can recover after bleaching events, environmental conditions causing bleaching can exert stress on these already fragile ecosystems. Today, we will create a presence-only model of severe coral bleaching events, and we will model oceanic conditions as their drivers and we will model their associations with respect to severe bleaching. This map displays a record of historic coral bleaching events. Different severities of bleaching are identified with different colors, as you can see here. Let's take a look at temporal histogram of bleaching events in the spatiotemporal data set. This data clock displays a large number of observations starting at 1997. Big differences in the number of records between years can introduce a systematic bias for presence-only models, putting more weight to later years with more data. For this reason, we will use recorded bleaching events after the year 1997. Before we start our analysis, let's investigate this data further in terms of the distribution of bleaching severity. This histogram for severities indicate that extreme severities, which are marked with higher severity codes, are uniformly distributed. In other words, we do not have to worry about stratified sampling for modeling severe bleaching events in this data set. In this study, we will focus on environmental conditions that result on high and medium severity events. I will quickly move to a Python notebook in ArcGIS Pro to discuss the overall workflow. Here, we will first get data from NOAA and UCAR um, databases, in addition to other databases that we will need, uh, so that we can get NetCDF files for spatiotemporal data on environmental conditions. Once we get this data set, we will manage and clean up this data set in ArcGIS Pro using geoprocessing functions. After our data is ready for analysis, we will move the raster data sets and bleaching conditions data set into R using the R ArcGIS bridge to create a presence only model of severe coral bleaching. In this notebook, we will connect to one of the data sources called Surface Ocean Carbon Dioxide Atlas or SOCAT to download all necessary net CDFs for the time steps that we will do our analysis on. Remember that we will limit our analysis to 1997 and forward. We start downloading all of our net CDFs and using XRA, I can simply combine these daily net CDFs into a large net CDF so that I can create annual summaries. That brings me to summarizing spatiotemporal information of environmental factors for presence only modeling. In ArcGIS Pro, I can leverage aggregate multidimensional raster tool for this joint SOCAT net CDF file for a variable of interest such as salinity. And I can create annual aggregations using a statistic such as the mean for the year that I'm interested in, such as 1998. And the results of aggregate multidimensional raster for the average salinity for the year 1998 is displayed on this map. This data is obtained at ship tracks. And as you see, this is not spatially extensive. One solution to this problem is interpolating this data set using empirical Bayesian Krieging. Using empirical Bayesian Krieging or EBK, I can create a continuous surface for this data set. And now I can use this data set for my prediction for all of the bleaching events, severe bleaching events that occurred in 1998. Just a note here to make is I need to do this analysis for all of the variables of interest, and I have 10 of them in this net CDF, and I have other net CDFs to analyze. I need to do this for different statistics, such as minimum, maximum, and average annually. And I need to do this for different years, 1997 and forward. So this is a lot of manual work. 
I can automate this workflow that I just showed you with these two tools inside a Python notebook. Here first, I will import all of the necessary libraries, the libraries that will enable me to bring in the NetCDF file as a pandas data frame, and it will also enable me to run ArcPy tools. I define some helper functions, the one being SOCAT summary will use aggregate multidimensional raster tool and empirical Bayesian Krieging to create different summaries of different variables at given times for a summary statistics of our choice. After these functions are defined, I can read in my data set so that I can extract all the variables that I will use in my analysis. And I will set a time range at which I will extract these annual patterns. And I will define the summary statistics that I will implement. And after these are defined, I can repeat this analysis for all years to create spatiotemporal summaries of my data to be used in predicting severe bleaching events. At this point in my analysis, I can move these data sources directly into R. So let's move over to an R notebook that can run alongside ArcGIS Pro. In our overall workflow, after wrangling our spatiotemporal data sets and creating many different variables at many different time steps for different summary statistics, we will use those rasters and the locations of severe bleaching events to understand which ocean conditions result in severe, oceanic, uh, severe coral bleaching. First, I will import all the necessary packages. ArcGIS binding is the R ArcGIS bridge. It moves, manages, and interactively maps geospatial data. We will import Reticulate, which is a R library that allows interacting with Python functions. And in this notebook, we will interact with ArcPy and run geoprocessing tools directly from this R notebook. We will use packages such as Dismo and MaxLike for species distribution modeling. And lastly, we will use SF, Raster, and Leaflet Esri functions to manage and interactively map geospatial data so that we can investigate our model on this notebook. After we bring these libraries in and check a valid ArcGIS Pro license so that we can use ArcGIS binding, using Reticulate, we import ArcPy library. At this point, we can run ArcPy functions such as checkout extension to check out the spatial analyst extension. And we can also define environment variables such as overwrite output. The first step in data IO is bringing in bleaching data sets. Remember that we are only interested in severe bleaching conditions. So I will bring severities of three into this data set. And year is an important variable as well, so I will keep the year column. So I will bring a subset of the severity of the bleaching data set with high severity. After this is completed, I will extract the locations of severe bleaching using Data2SF. As a next step, I will bring in shallow bathymetry polygons. In presence-only modeling, we have to define a realistic study area, and bleaching events are expected to occur at shallower depths. So we will subset this data set, all of our predictor rasters as well, at these shallow bathymetries. So once this data set is in R using the R ArcGIS bridge, I will use an ArcPy function called extract by mask, but I'll be running this um, ArcPy function from this R notebook to mask an input raster that we just calculated in the previous Python notebook and mask it using a shallow bathymetry mask so that we will have a representative study area for this mask raster. And I can run this in a loop for all of my rasters so that I can run extract by mask function on all of the rasters that I would like to include in my analysis. However, I'm not done gathering my data sources. An important data for this presence only model is aragonite. Aragonite or calcium carbonate makes up the skeletons of corals and it is essential for reefs stability and structure. It's a, it is an important indicator for coral reefs. Luckily, we have this data set in the living atlas as an image service. And using the R ArcGIS bridge, I can interact with the REST API that contains this image service and seamlessly bring it in as an R raster for my analysis. Once the aragonite raster is inside R as a spatial R raster, I'm going to use the stack rock function in R 
to stack all of my predictor rasters so that I can carry on my presence only modeling. And here are some of the predictor rasters that we have masked using extract by mask function the previous step. And I'm displaying it for one of the years, which is 1998, that we will use to create our presence only model. Now that our data is in one place, we can create the presence only model for severe bleaching. Here, the whole idea is relating different environmental conditions, such as maximum sea surface temperature at different years, average dissolved carbon dioxide at different years, and average aragonite levels to locations at which severe bleaching events are observed. This model will indicate what are some of the conditions that cause severe coral bleaching. And here we will fit a maximum likelihood model for presence called max-like to relate which are the conditions that result in occurrence of severe bleaching events. Here we define the maxan formula that we've um, where we define a linear combination of all these factors as it impacts severe bleaching events, our predictive rasters that we just stacked, and bleaching locations that we extracted from severe bleaching data set. And we make a prediction globally. And first thing I would like to do is summarize this data sets for the probability of mid to severe coral bleaching. Note that a high number of locations are identified as with high probability of severe bleaching. I can write this data set back, this output raster back to analyze it further in ArcGIS Pro. But for now, I will stay in this R notebook and compare it to live data. For this, I will interact with NOAA's Coral Reef Watch feature service that serves up-to-date bleaching information geospatially from this REST API. Again, using the RArcGIS bridge, I can seamlessly bring in this up-to-date data as an R data frame. Using our leaflet integration, I can create interactive maps and I can define some informative text for all of my measurements. I can interact with this data set so that I can see the latest bleaching data in my R notebook. As a next step, I would like to visually inspect whether or not my model has predictive capabilities. I will overlay my prediction raster onto this data set and see that in parts of Gulf of Mexico, where I have high probabilities of bleaching, I observe severe bleaching events. Conversely, areas that have low probabilities of bleaching, such as the Red Sea, are identified with low bleaching severities. And this visual inspection shows me that my model seems to be a predictive one. Using ArcGIS Pro, R, and Python, you can create sophisticated scientific workflows that solve sophisticated problems.